This group of videos is all about liabilities. So I thought I'd spend most of my time in this introductory video just talking about bonds. It, we have problems that explore things like notes payable, as well as sort of long-term debt or long-term mortgages payable. But um, really the most challenging topic in a typical liabilities chapter is bonds. So in this video, I'm going to talk about bonds and then you'll see in problems uh, 9-3 and 9-4 we and 9-5, we look at some bonds and doing journal entries around bonds issued at discounts and at premiums. But at the outset, it's just important to kind of understand what a bond is. So some of you, if you're lucky, and I, I certainly wasn't lucky enough to be among uh, those folks, but some of you may have had your parents or grandparents or somebody when you're growing up purchase for you a savings bond from your government or from some other organization, but very often a government. And it's definitely here in Canada, it was definitely a thing uh, when I was growing up was people would buy savings bonds, Canada savings bonds, they were called. And what a savings bond was, was people would give money to the government, say $1,000, and the government would say, okay, I promise to pay you back, and I'll pay you back with interest. So when we look at bonds, we're not looking at it from the investor's perspective. We're looking at it from the borrower's perspective. And what's happening here is the government of Canada is saying, I promise to pay you back $1,000 plus interest. This is debt. This is a liability. And what kind of liability? Well, this is called a bond and a bond is just a series of notes payable. So uh, rather than uh, borrowing, you know, a thousand dollars, or rather than borrowing a million dollars or tens of millions of dollars from the bank, the government might get a better interest rate. And well, there's other reasons a government might want to issue bonds, but the government might get a better interest rate by saying, okay, I'm going to lend a thousand dollars to you, a thousand dollars to you, a thousand dollars to you, and add up to a, a million or $10 million, or whatever uh, the entity is looking to get. So one reason they may do that, they might uh, get a better interest rate, which means lower interest payments, which is better for them. In the case of a government, they want to encourage citizens to save. So they might give actually a premium interest rate to encourage their citizens to save. But, but back to the issue of bonds. So it's this series of notes payable that a company issues. They say, okay, we're going to promise to pay you back and we'll promise to pay you back with interest. But one feature of many bonds uh, is that they're very long term in nature. If you go on yahoo.com, Yahoo, I always look at Google Finance in my class, but Yahoo Finance is quite good as well. And Yahoo, in my view, has the best bond listings online. Maybe somebody who uh, knows better than me would, would laugh at that, but that's the one I always look at. And if you look at Yahoo Finance's bond screener, and you sort by like longest maturity, you'll see bonds that don't mature for a hundred years. In other words, the company's saying, I'm going to borrow a thousand dollars today and I'm going to pay you back a hundred years from now. So I'm going to pay you back in like the 2100s, right? It's like in 2010 or 2015 or 2017 right now. Uh, and I'm going to pay you back in uh, 2115 or 2120 or whatever the years, like 100 years from now. And so you think, well, why would a lender ever do that? Like they're going to pay me back and they're going to pay me back with interest in 100 years. Well, the reason people do this is they're not as interested in the payment back at the end. They're interested in receiving interest payments in the middle. And so what makes a bond a little bit different than other types of debt is the bonds receive periodic interest payments. Typically every six months, uh, uh, an interest payment will be made. And so old people like this type of investment, they put their money in a bond and they know, okay, every six months I'm going to get a check and it's going to be the same amount every time. It's not like a stock investment where the stock price goes up, the stock price goes down, or maybe a dividend gets paid one year and doesn't get paid the next. A bond payment is consistent. However, and this is where bonds get a little bit tricky. Um, you got to trust that the company is going to be around to pay you back. And because of that, because there's this trust element, uh, uh, some bonds are more valuable than others. If you look at 100-year bonds right now, I, I've, I've looked at the list. There is two that stood out to me. MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which is one of the best universities in the United States, has a bond that's somewhere around 100 years. And... Uh, 
also uh, somewhere around 100 years, there's a retailer called J.C. Penney, which is an American uh, retail store that sells, uh, you know, like clothing and uh, other things like that. Um, MIT's bonds are rated much more highly than JCPenney's. Now, why is the bond rating higher for MIT than JCPenney? Because investors and, and analysts look at the bond and they say, oh, you know what? It's more likely than that MIT is going to be around in 100 years and they're going to pay back this debt than it is JCPenney. So the bond ratings look like this. Triple A, double A, single A, triple B, double B. And it just goes down the list. Um, I think once you're below triple B, you're considered a junk bond, which means it's um, getting to be much higher risk. So when the government of Canada issues a bond, uh, they'll be rated very highly because it's very likely that they're going to pay back. And so the government of Canada can get away with offering a lower interest rate than could a triple B or double B rated bond because triple B or double B bring with them more risk. So if they want to attract investors, they need to offer a higher interest rate. So what happens when bonds get issued is uh, the issuer sets an interest rate and the market will determine whether that interest rate was too high or too low and that they won't pay full price for the bond. So if the government of Canada says, you know what, triple A and they offer 10%, which would be a really high number for a bond to offer right now. Investors are going to love it. They're going to say, oh my gosh, that's an amazing bond. I need to buy it. The government of Canada is offering 10% interest. Nobody's getting close to that right now. Uh, and because of that, investors would be willing to pay a premium. They would pay above what the government of Canada is asking. The government of Canada would say, we want $1,000 for a bond. Well, so much demand would happen that the bonds would trade at a premium. Uh, if a double B bond issued at 0.5%, well, I can tell you the market for double B bond, uh, you know, the, if you were to invest in one, you would want a much higher return than that, and the market would be much higher. So this issue price is much lower than uh, what the market rate would be, and the bond could not charge a premium. It would get issued at a discount. So much of our time uh, when we examine these bonds will be spent on dealing with how do we compute the price of the premium or the price of the discount? How do we deal with the fact that we issue this $1,000 bond, and maybe if we're the government of Canada, we get like $1,200, but we have to pay back $1,000. We get paid a premium, but we only have to pay back $1,000. Well, how does that work? How do you sort of reconcile the two as an accountant, right? I borrow, uh, I get $1,200, I only have to pay back $1,000 in, in 10 or 20 or 50 years. How does that even work? Well, we're going to find out. That's what this chapter is all about. It's a uh, definitely about other liabilities, but our main focus here will be on understanding bonds and how they work. So that's it for our intro. Stay tuned, especially if you're interested in bonds, to 9-3, 9-4, and problem 9-5. Uh, all right, let's get going.